Hey folks, Jeff from Corrugated Cavalier here, coming to you with my second video in my series on my journey into Bolognese swordsmanship, uh, specifically the work of Giovanni Della Gocchia. Part one you can find up there, and that's going over the basic uh, cuts and the tax thrusts um, as well in Della Gocchia's system. And today we're going to be looking at the guards in Della Gocchia, which can be a little bit different than some of the other Bolognese masters. Um, I'm going to put a video down here, uh, Martin, who has much better form than I do, uh, but he doesn't really go into explaining them too much in that video, but they look really nice. I'm going to link that video down there. Okay, so um, Dalgoki says that there are eight guards, which are the most important, four high and four low. So I'm going to go through those first and then go through the others. Eight guards, four high, four low that are most important. So he starts off with Kodalunga, and I think of anything Kodalunga as coming after a throwing a reverso. So the first one he talks about is Kodalunga and Kodalunga Stretta. So Kodalunga Stretta, he says, is on the, or any Kodalunga is on the outside of the right side, and Kodalunga Stretta is near the knee with the point facing the enemy. I think of this as I just cut like a mezza reverso or something like that. And I end here with my point at the enemy. And the next guard he talks about is Codalunga Alta, which is a bit higher with the point still facing the enemy. And he says that this one is left foot forward. Codalunga Alta is left foot forward. So we have Zeta, right foot forward, point a little bit lower near the knee. Codalunga Alta a little bit higher with the left foot forward. So those are the first two low guards. Stretta, Alta. Then he goes into Porta di Ferro, and he doesn't uh, distinguish between Stretta, uh, Larga, or Alta here. He just says Porta di Ferro, and that's, I think of any Porta di Ferro guard is I just finished a Mandrito, either Pendente or Squalimbro. So he just says Porta di Ferro. Right foot forward, the sword uh, on the other side, on the inside sort of, and still pointing at the enemy. And if you have your left foot forward at a slight angle, and especially with your right shoulder pointing toward the enemy, and then the sword is near your left knee, but the point is still facing toward the enemy, this is Cinghiale Porta di Ferro. Okay, so Porta di Ferro in general, right foot forward, Cinghiale Porta di Ferro, left foot forward. Okay, so those are the four low guards, Codalunga Stretta, Alta, Porta di Ferro and Cinghiale Porta di Ferro. Those are the four low guards that he says are most important. There are more which we'll go into. So the high guards which he says are most important are Guardia di Alicorno. And I think about this sort of like cream hanging guard. So the sword is high, the handle is above your head, point facing down and toward the enemy. I don't think it matters which foot is forward at all. This is good for uh, a thrust in Brocata. It's also a great ending position after a Reverso Ridolpio, which you'll find in the next video that I do as well. So this is Guardia di Alicorno. Then we have Guardia di Testa, which is mostly used for parrying. As far as I can tell, the hand is high again, but the sword is coming down in front of you to cover the upper openings. And I don't think it matters which foot is forward once again, right foot forward, left foot forward doesn't matter. And um, he also says in later sections that the tip can drop a bit if you're defending from a squalimbro or a tondo or something like that. And you can turn your right, you can turn behind your right side to defend from it as well. So that's Guardia di Testa. Then we have Guardia di Faccia, which is the palm up and the true edge facing in. This is good for parrying attacks coming in to your upper left and also for throwing punta reversa. So Guardia di Faccia, palm up, true edge in. And then Guardia di Entrare is a little bit different in Dalagokie's system. So, sorry, this is Faccia from a couple sides. Guardia di Entrare is a little bit different in Dalagokie's system in that the palm, uh, he has it down and the point facing toward the enemy. And he says that it's good for entering. This is slightly different than other Bolognese masters. But Garia di Entrare. So that's Alicorno, Testa, Faccia, and Entrare. 
Those are the four important high guards that Dalgokia mentions. So let's get into some of the other guards, especially the low guards. Um, the student in the text asks, asks him to elaborate more. So, basically he says that Coralonga and Porta di Ferro may be broken down into Alta, Larga, and Stretta. Not necessarily in that order, I don't remember the exact order. So let's go back to Coralunga. So we have Stretta, which we had right foot forward. And then if you imagine that you just did a full reverso and the point ended up all the way down here toward the ground, then this is Coda Lunga Larga. And he says it's Larga because it presents a lot of openings, actually. And then if you follow the sword, so Coda Lunga Larga, if the sword goes all the way back so the point is facing behind you, this is called Coda Lunga Distesa. So this looks a little bit more like Fiore's Coda Lunga at this point. Coda Lunga Distesa. This can be left foot forward or right foot forward. So we had Alta, which is left foot forward, point a little bit higher. Stretta, which is point still facing the enemy, but uh, right hand a little bit lower, closer to the knee. Larga, which is, uh, no, sorry, that was Distesa. Larga, which is uh, if you just threw like a full cut and ended all the way down by their knee with your point. And Distesa, which is pointing all the way back. And he says that Three of those may be formed with the left foot or the right foot forward, those being Alta, Larga, and Distesa. He does not mention Coda Lunga Stetta being performed with the left foot forward at all. Um, and the same thing goes for Porta di Ferro. So we have, we had, he just said Porta di Ferro before. So let's start from Stretta. So this is right foot forward, point facing the enemy, sort somewhat close to the knee. And you have Alta, just like you do with Coda Lunga as well. Porta di Ferro Alta. And then you also have, of course, if you threw a full mandrito and ended up down here, Porta di Ferro Larga. So Alta, Sveta, Larga. And the only one he mentions being with the left foot forward is Cinghiale Porta di Ferro Stretta. He does not mention Cinghiale Porta di Ferro Alta or Larga. They may exist uh, because he says it sort of doesn't matter which foot is forward, but Dalagoki does not mention them specifically. I know that other Bolognese masters do, but Dalagoki does not mention these specifically. The only left foot forward Porta di Ferro guard he mentions is Cinghiale Porta di Ferro Stretta. Okay? So that's broken down into Alta, Stretta, Larga, and in Codalunga we have Distesa as well, and we have Cinghiale, Porta di Ferro, Stretta. Those are all the low guards he mentions, and I haven't seen anything else used so far in the text. Okay, so the other high guards, he goes on to talk about Garia di Alta, and this can be either forward or feet together, and this is the sword all the way up, the hand raised, the point can be back, it can be up, doesn't really matter. And this is for throwing a nice big cut, okay? Guardia di Alta. Very up, elbow pointing forward. And then he also mentions two guards, which are a little bit more useful for buckler, as you'll be able to see, but he mentions uh, sopra braccio, so sword over the left arm. And I think about soprano. The singer, soprano singer, being a high voice to keep that straight, and sota braccio. And I think about uh, sotani from Fiore coming from below. Okay, and as you can tell, this is a little bit more relevant when you have a buckler. The sword could be here, so the sword could be under. Sopra and sota braccio. Okay. Those are really all the guards that Dalagoke mentions um, in the guards section, and I haven't seen any other come about in the single sword uh, section of the manuscript. So uh, we'll see as our journey progresses if any other pop up, but that's it for now. Go watch Martin's video. Hopefully it will be helpful on better posture things and stuff like that. Great. Thank you all for joining my journey into Bolognese swordsmanship. Thank you for coming by the channel. Please click like subscribe, share this with around with people who might find it interesting. You can find me on Twitter at CorrugatedCav1. 
Thank you for coming by once again. Be good to each other and ciao.